Welcome everybody to today's webinar on using dreams to manage and create change. Very, very excited to have Bessie Grund of Dream Integrity here with us today and I'm ready to present this. I think you're going to absolutely love the information she's got for you on dreams and using them in change. Uh, before I get started, I ask Betsy's permission to make a little bit of an announcement. Very exciting news. Uh, the Center for Coaching Certification worked with a group of coaches to write a book called Coaching Perspectives. And I would like to invite you to visit our website, centerforcoachingcertification.com. And if you go to the resources page and click on recommended reading, you will see a link to that book called Coaching Perspectives, written by coaches that have gone through our certification. So very, very excited to have that available. Do you want to welcome everybody here? Uh, because of the number of people that are attending this webinar, uh, what we're going to do is keep you on mute. Uh, there are simply so many people, we, we have to do that. So if you have a question, I would like to invite you to type it into your question panel, and I will be monitoring that question panel as we go through and giving Hesse your questions so that we are sure she has a chance to answer them and respond to you. If they sit uh, in where she's at in her presentation, I'll ask them then. And some of the questions I'll save until the end. Uh, just based on what they are and what the flow is. So do ask your questions as we go through. We want to make sure we get those answered. Uh, now what I'd like to do is in, let you all know that uh, Betsy is somebody that I have known for a number of years, very proud to call her a friend, and very impressed with her skill, her expertise, and what she has to offer. Uh, Betsy is uh, certified in dream work, and she has fabulous insight to share with you. So, Betsy, please go ahead and take over. All right, wonderful, Kathy. Um, is my screen showing up there? Or not yet? Uh, not yet. Okay, let me. And there you go. And okay. if you want to start your PowerPoint presentation, yep, you're all set now. There we go. Okay. Um, thanks Thank so you. much. Thanks so much, Kathy. This is wonderful. I'm I'm excited to do this, and I'm um, really want to welcome everyone and say thank you for joining in. Um, this is a great opportunity for me. And as I was preparing for the webinar, I really was thinking about how much dream work and coaching have in common. So I'm excited about the possible future collaboration we might create. Uh, coaches and dream workers both are focusing on a client's situation to facilitate understanding of their personal obstacles and their options. We do that to help them move forward in getting what they want. And I was thinking about myself, you know, when I'm being coached, I want a new perspective. I want tools to encourage me to use my gifts and face my issues honestly. And as a resource person, a coach or a dream therapist, we want to share our perspectives and our tools without imposing ourselves too much um, so that clients are really empowered to reach their goals and move on into the future you know, not needing our help, or, um, you know, using our help uh, as more of a maintenance. While dream work um, right now may, to some of you who haven't done any dream work, might seem sort of less clear. And, or, and yes. Bessie, if you could do me a favor, talk a little bit louder. I'm getting some feedback that it's hard to hear you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Is that better? Okay. Sorry about that. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll keep an eye on that. Please don't hesitate to let me know, though. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. So um, anyway, I'm, I hope to show you that dream work really is, in fact, fun. It's efficient. It's action-oriented. 
and it really is a reliable source of guidance that is accessible to anyone. So before I get into our agenda, um, Kathy suggested that we might have a little poll for people to participate in, just so we have an idea of um, how many of you have actually worked with your dreams before. So I think Kathy's going to put that poll up there for us to see, and you all will have a chance to vote on it or uh, express your uh, experience with dreams. And we'll just take a minute to do that, and I. I believe you'll be able to see uh, the responses that everyone gives. Yes, yeah, so if you would uh, go ahead and uh, start clicking and voting uh, on there. Oh, and I, I think I, uh, I goofed. Uh, we had a, a third of you said you rarely remember your dreams and have not worked with them. A third of you said, you remember, you're curious, you never tried to figure them out. And then a third of you said, you work with dreams some and want new ways to work with them. Uh, so that, that is what we have seen on that poll. And so thank you, everyone, for uh, participating in that. And Betsy, it's back to you. OK, terrific. Well, hopefully, um, hopefully my, my presentation has a little bit to offer. Uh, each of us, for, for everybody. And here is our agenda. Uh, this is what I plan to cover in the next hour. Some thoughts about change and dreams. Some uh, information about how dreams present their messages to us. And um, I want to talk a little bit about what we actually do in dream work. So I'm focusing my talk on change because all of us, I mean all of us as humans, it seems like we are all either trying to make positive change or just trying to hang on in the face of change. And I think that coaching deals with change, uh, as my experience has been, that um, you know, change is everything. Um, and for my whole adult life, change has uh, been sort of near and dear to my heart in another way. My first job was as a community organizer and activist, and I did that for about 10 years. And then I went back to school for a master's in adult education because I began to understand that helping people change on the inside uh, through education rather than trying to impose structures that would change the world, quote unquote, uh, it's probably more effective and more reliable to help people change from the inside. So the um, adult ed perspective showed me that dream work has a really clear place in the super wide spectrum of types and purposes of adult education. Um, it, it is um, right in there with psychological types of programming like health and wellness, coaching and counseling. And it also has a lot in common with support groups and community building as well. So I was uh, pleased to find that what I was hoping to make a career of, um, that DreamWork was, you know, actually had a, a legitimate place in the educational world. So um, my little um, joke, we, we all know that change is inevitable, except from a vending machine. Um, and I um, am um, sorry. This is my first webinar. I'm going to go ahead and admit that. But change is inevitable. And I, I sort of uh, scooted forward before I should have. Dreams are inevitable also. And so what I'm, the point I'm making is it's important to remember that we all dream every night when we sleep. Some people don't realize that. They feel like they're not dreaming because the dreams are so hard to remember. And even when we do remember them, they have such a tendency to evaporate so quickly. Um, if we don't take time to write them down or really commit them to memory when we wake up, we, we can't work with them. So that's just kind of rule number one. Um, definitely write down your dreams if you're interested in figuring out what they're about. Um, I want to share five points about what makes dreams uh, helpful to us when we're working with change, either trying to create positive change or 
dealing with change. And by the way, um, dreams are helping us every day, whether we know it or not. If you think about evidence that you may have heard that if a person is deprived of dreaming, even for a few days, we can become confused and irritable. And if we're deprived of dreaming for much longer than that, uh, people begin to hallucinate and psychosis sets in. And um, So whether or not we know it, every night our dreams are helping us to cope with reality. All right. So first of all, point number one, dreams are a current source of information for each of us. Our senses, um, all throughout the waking life, our senses are taking in all the input around us, even things that we don't even notice. Our brains are recording everything that we're exposed to, even though much of what we see and hear doesn't even register with our conscious mind. So even when we're facing rapid changes in the environment, our brains and our dreams, then, are keeping up with all that we've experienced. Um, those things that we're aware of and those things um, of which we're not aware. So this is, um, you know, our, my image. Each of us is carrying a lot of things with us that we can't see and really aren't aware of. Number two, dreams are highly personalized information. I like to say that they are of, by, and for the dreamer. While we often can't think of why a particular dream would come to us, we really have to admit that it's most likely a dream was not created by someone else. It did come from us. And the information in dreams is based on our particular experience of the world. Um, the thing that I love about this is that, like a lot of people, I really pride myself on being able to see both sides of a story or see many sides of an issue. But in reality, what that means for me is that I question myself and my decisions a lot because I can always see the other point of view. So what's really important about this is that when I work with dreams, I'm tapping a source of personal authority that has all the information. Um, it's authority that shines through or more dramatically cuts through all of the other authorities that we've been exposed to, like parents and school and media and our peers. And so the wisdom in dreams is tailored specifically and directly to the dreamer. I think as resource people, coaches, therapists, that this is just an incredibly rich source of information for and about the client. Number three, dreams offer guidance for healthy development. Um, so every night our brains are processing all of this external input we come in contact with every day. And our dreams are a reflection of that processing and of our brain's attempt to resolve the differences between our internal experience and the external input that we're being exposed to every day. What dreams do is pull out or point out things that need our attention. One of the important aspects of dream work is looking for the guidance about patterns and beliefs that need adjustment in our lives. Sometimes, I'm sure you know, it's just a belief sometimes that holds us back from in action or moving forward in a healthy way. And we can't change a belief unless we know that we have it. Um, so I have a quick example of that. Recently I dreamt um, about a woman who was telling me that it was her birthday. And she, I was, uh, could tell easily she clearly did not feel like she was getting acknowledgement for this birthday. And so when I woke up and I thought about the birthday as representing the birth of something new in my life, I realized that I really hadn't been giving myself credit for some of the changes I've made and some of the things that I've achieved. So working with that dream helped me to change the belief that I hadn't really accomplished very much. 
and of course, you know, this gave me lots of encouragement and confidence to move forward. So that's just a, a quick example. The ne my next point is that dreams are giving us a much bigger perspective than we generally have. And I love this iceberg image because I think it's such an accurate metaphor for both the limits of our awareness being just that tip of the iceberg. You know, at any given moment, we can only be aware of so much information and uh, so much about ourselves. But we also have this incredible capacity that we have access to when we really intend to tap into that potential. So dreams give us a bigger picture based on our whole consciousness, our waking consciousness, our what we're aware of, and then also our subconscious or unconscious. Um, they don't deal with just the tip of the iceberg. The big picture is, of course, very helpful in creative problem solving. Um, there's a reason why we often say, I need to sleep on that, when we're faced with big choices and decisions. Um, because the processing that goes on while we sleep is so invaluable for getting that new, bigger perspective that can lead us to a solution. And number five, finally, um, I believe, and, I, and a lot of people believe, that all dreams are coming in service of health and wholeness of the dreamer. They're all prompting us toward healthy development or change. And um, this phrase is coined, as you can see, by Reverend Jeremy Taylor. He's a, my, sort of my guru and has been doing dream work all over the world for the last 30 years. Um, he emphasizes even that the worst nightmares are coming to draw our attention to something that we need to know for health and development. Um, really important to remember that nightmares aren't there to tell us, you know, that we're bad or we're never going to make it or, you know, something awful is going to happen, but they're pointing out something that is out of balance or something that might be a solution to a problem. Um, for examples, I want to ask you to consider that numerous solutions to important individual and social problems have directly come from dreams. Thousands of inventions like the sewing machine, Elias Howe's sewing machine, works of art and music, for instance, Yesterday by Paul McCartney, and groundbreaking theories um, like Mandelayev's periodic table of elements, all attributed to dreams. And it's well, document, well documented. There are just thousands of examples. So dreams are not only accessible, but they've always been an important part of human experience and evolution. So that brings us to number two, uh, how dreams communicate their messages. And an important thing you need to know right off the bat, and I've already alluded to it, is that dreams speak a language of metaphor and symbol. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit. One the theoretical approach to dreams and where they come from has us look at the brain. Um, the other major one, to my mind, is has us look at the psyche or the soul, but for today I'm just going to focus on the brain and, and its influence on, um, on dreams and dreaming. Um, so our brains function differently during different states of consciousness. And wakefulness, sleeping, and dreaming, our brains are sort of dealing with all those different states of consciousness in different ways. And the two halves of our brains even function differently during different states. So um, the, during sleep, the left brain gets very, very quiet. The right brain gets very, very active. And just as a reminder, um, I used to get these so confused, but it's become a such an important part of my dream work that I'm, I'm beginning to remember it better. But just as a quick reminder, the left brain is characterized by intellect and logic, verbal communication, linear time, clear boundaries in space. The right brain deals with emotion, pictures, images, the present moment, 
and fluid boundaries. So to give a quick example of that, if you're walking down the street, you see a flower vendor across the street. The right brain would be processing your emotional connection to the beauty of the scene, the color of the flowers, the smile on the vendor's face. You're, share, you're, you're wanting to, to share the flowers with a friend. The left brain actually makes it possible for you to walk across the street looking both ways uh, and lets you think about if you have money in your pocket to pay for them and when you might see your friend to give the flowers to them. So we need both sides of the brain to make sense of our waking life situations. The left brain is also related to conscious thought and the right deals more with unconscious content. So when we sleep and dream, our left brain, our conscious brain, function sort of goes to sleep, and the right brain, that experiential, emotional, and image-oriented side gets very, very active. And this is why we see uh, and experience such bizarre elements, um, things that defy gravity and logic and so much else that we rely on in waking life. In dreams, anything can happen. So again, the important thing to remember is that because the right brain is active, dreams are speaking to us or telling us what we need to know by using symbol and metaphor. And the power of the symbols and the stories that teach us so much about the meaning of the dream. In dream work, it is often that very bizarre quality that captures our attention and gets us to remember. and it those, those bizarre things sort of help us go where we might not go if the information was pre presented to us in a more literal way or a way that we expected. Um, and this is... And, and Betsy, you're fading out a little bit again, so feel free okay. to yell at us so we can hear you easily. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Matthew. you. All right. So this... Um, this is just a, another thing that I love about dream work is that, um, like most people, I can fool myself using logic. Um, I can talk myself into or out of just about anything. But my dreams reliably take me where I need to go um, because I, I can't really make sense until I begin to work with the dream. Um, I'm not really sure where it's going. And despite my attempts to either avoid something or or push for something that's not right for me, um, the dream will, will help me go to uh, in a direction that truly is in my best interest. All right, so we'll move on to um, what dream work involves, but first I want to give you a quick summary. Um, so dreams are inevitable. We all have them. We just need to remember them and record them. They bring current personalized messages and guidance. Dreams come in service of health and wholeness. And they speak a language of metaphor and symbol. And there's actually one other one that I would add to that, and that is that they bring new information. Dreams don't come just to tell us what we already know. And I'm not sure I've really addressed that in my, uh, in my talk today. So. All right, so what is dream work? Um, it's the work of looking in that backpack for our obstacles, for our potential, our skills, our stories. Uh, for me, it's where I go for the truth. At its simplest, the exploration of a dream, it is, a, it is an exploration of a dream by one or more people. There are limitless ways to work with dreams, and um, so what I'm doing today is just barely scratching the surface, but I do hope to give you some practical ideas and an idea about how to begin. First of all, we've got to write them down. Um, it's so important to get the dreams and the images outside of ourselves and onto paper or uh, into a piece of artwork or somehow get them outside of ourselves, like journal writing. It's just so important to to uh, be able to see something outside of ourselves in, in order to reflect on it. I suggest writing in present tense, giving a title and a date, 
and um, making a note of what's going on in waking life. Um, you just write as much as you can remember about the dream. And I have mm, just made up a simplified example so that I can kind of show you how this works. Um, so in this dream, I'm driving on a smooth, wide road uh, in what seems to be my new Jaguar car. And all of a sudden, I realize I haven't got any clothing on. On the seat next to me, I see an empty fast food bag. And shortly after that, I pull up to my, um, my home with great relief and notice a bunch of newspapers um, up on the porch. They've been delivered, but not read or opened. And they're just hanging out there. So if you kind of have that in your mind, it's not really too far-fetched for a dream, right? This is, um, these kinds of things happen in dreams. So we get that written down. And then next, we want to start to make some associations to the symbols in the dream. It's not free association, but um, it's a technique that Carl Jung develop where we choose a symbol and keep coming back to that symbol in order to get um, the deeper meanings from our subconscious or unconscious. And an easy way to do that is what I have on the screen here. It's to write a symbol, draw a circle around it, and put some spokes coming out, three, five, eight, however many you need. And then quickly, without thinking too much, you write the first words that come to mind at the ends of the spokes. And so uh, you just take whatever comes. I started with cat on the lower left. Cat, black, fast, sleek, and just went on around um, until I got to dangerous. So um, I want to talk about some, a few of the common dream elements and how I approach those when working with a dream. Um, a lot of us dream regularly about being in a car, a plane, a bus, train, boat. And I think of vehicles as symbolic, um, or can be symbolic. They can, they can mean a whole lot of things. But one way of approaching them is to think about how I get around in my life. Uh, so if I'm dreaming that I'm cruising down a smooth, wide road, driving my new Jaguar, it might be confirming for me that I'm getting around pretty easily these days. I'm in control, and it's a new way, and it's quick as a cat. Um, as far as clothing, I notice in the dream, you know, I write down, you know, what does the clothing look like? How does it feel to wear it? And whether I'm mis missing some or what the colors are, that kind of thing. One way of thinking about clothes is as a symbol of our persona or the image that we're presenting in the world. So I'll often start out by asking if the symbol has to do with how I'm presenting myself to the world or how I'm being seen by others. I would make associations to the word naked, maybe something like the naked truth or exposed, uncovered, nothing on, go along like that. And then back to the example, if I'm driving my Jaguar and then I realize I have nothing on at all, it might mean that for right now, I'm doing OK. I'm driving pretty well, but pretty soon I might start feeling exposed in some way. Um, food is also a really common symbol in dreams and often can be a metaphor for what kind of nurturing I'm getting or giving. I might make associations in the, in the example to the empty bag, um, fast food, and start wondering about whether maybe I need to nurture myself with a higher quality of care, or if my nurturing is somehow has an empty quality to it, something like that. And then finally, a house or home can be a symbol of my inner home or my center possibly my physical body or my spiritual center. Um, I ask myself questions about where do I feel at home? Am I at home with an aspect of myself or an aspect of my life? And um, then, again, going back to the dream example, I arrive home, and it looks like maybe I haven't been there for a while, and I'm behind on some of the news. 
so you can begin to think about how the dream tells a story when we are looking at these symbols and our associations to them. Um, a dream dictionary can give some ideas about associations, but I always encourage people to use their own associations first. And um, so after we've made some associations, um, we, and, and even, and while we're making those associations, we definitely want to attend to our emotions. And this is a uh, really important part of dream work. Um, it's really super helpful to tune into my own emotions, how am I feeling in the dream, and also thinking about how are the other characters feeling in the dream, if there are other, um, other people in the dream. Um, it, this it can be really challenging, and, and in my dream work, it um, has been one of the most fruitful uh, things that I've learned, and, but still very challenging. I think a lot of us really have to work hard to identify emotions. But as you can imagine, it's a very important part of dream work, especially as it pertains to change. Um, because regardless of what we know intellectually or what we you know, have evidence for, we do make decisions. People do make decisions based on our emotions. So we need to really be clear about our emotions. And dreams are really helpful in, in uh, getting us to recognize what our emotions are. And I have one more slide about that. Um, I um, pose, uh, I think there's starting to be a lot of agreement that there are um, four basic emotions. You know, there are lots of different theories and different ways to think about it, but um, Justina Lasley, the who um, is the director of the Institute for Dream Studies, where I went, um, talked a lot about this, and, and we looked into this quite a lot. And I found it so helpful um, to try to get to what is the basic emotion in a dream. Um, so I'll ask myself, you know, when did I feel like that before? And it's really useful to get to those basic emotions that lie under other ways we might describe how we feel. Uh, the basic ones are very much clearer, I think. And um, so often people talk about being confused or frustrated, and it's important to get beyond that, get beyond the brick wall of frustration or the tangled web of confusion. Because if we can say uh, that past that frustration is anger, and I'm angry because such and such, then there's something to work with, and we can begin to take action. Um, so really important to identify the feelings. Number four, then what we do is we start to relate the associations and the emotions and with our waking life. We want to play around with those images and words and um, think about the story and see what they might be commenting on, anything, something in the past, present, or future. Um, because we're working with symbols, they often, again, sort of take us places where we wouldn't normally go. And um, so it's, again, that um, wonderful quality of sort of not, they outsmart us instead of us outsmarting ourselves. And I found consistently that my dreams take me in a direction that is um, most true to myself. Um, if I think back to the example that I gave, maybe the, the jaguar represents that, that maybe I've gotten some sort of a boost in my life, maybe some money, it's this expensive car. Um, but there's something about it that feels a little empty, perhaps, um, and isn't really very nurturing. Um, when I get back home to my inner self, I see that I've been away for a while, and maybe it's a message to attend to my inner life a little bit. And then finally, um, another main thing that we're doing in dream work is um, to get the insights. This, this is our goal 
The goal of dream work is to get to those ideas that prompt an aha or that feeling of the light bulb going on or a shift in perspective. When you work with a dream, that shift is signaling the insight and it's at least the beginning of understanding the meaning of the dream. Um, that shift means that we're moving something from the unconscious to consciousness. And um, again, thinking back to that iceberg, we're tapping into those parts of ourselves that are sort of below the surface. And here's a quote from Sigmund Freud. He says that dreams are the royal road to the unconscious. And therefore, dreams can comment on just about anything. So it's really good to keep an open mind when you're working with dreams. Um, know that there may be an element talking about your physical health, um, offering solutions to practical problems, commenting on emotions, um, on relationships, hidden talents, wish fulfillment, uh, human experience, spiritu uh, spirituality, personality, um, opportunities coming your way, creativity, and there's really no end to that list. Um, I want to talk just briefly about you know, why we also want to work on dreams in groups. Um, like in coaching, we coach ourselves and um, all the time. And I do dream work alone as well, and it's very helpful. But it's also just um, brilliant to have others to work with uh, who can give me more perspectives, more ideas, and ultimately that encouragement for making changes based on the insights that have come from my own dream. Um, dream work is a time and a place for us to tap into the wisdom that we carry with us and also to receive the reflections of ourselves that other people can offer. So what do we do in dream work with others? Um, a dream is shared, uh, generally in present tense, so that people can, uh, the members of the group can really um, hear it as though it's happening right now. Group members will listen very carefully and do their best to imagine the dream as it's being related to them. And what we're doing really is kind of trying to try on the dream as if it was my own. That's what I'm always doing when I hear a dream, is I'm imagining it as though it were mine. And then I'll ask clarifying questions of the dreamer about the details, about the color and the feelings. And so much more comes up, even um, more than sometimes is originally written down as the dreamer is kind of going back through the dream and we ask those questions. Then the group members will often share their associations so that the dreamer can try on those ideas and see if they trigger any ahas or insights. So there are hundreds of processes that people can use to explore any dream. And I've talked, I'm sort of, uh, use words a lot, obviously, and I've talked about playing with words, but creating art around dream images, using active imagination and dialoguing with different parts of the dream, all of these uh, help us to draw on the information from the subconscious and the unconscious and bring those insights into awareness. So dream work is very flexible practice. Um, but I do have a few rules that help us to uh, navigate dream work in a way that is um, comfortable and productive. And so first of all, I assume and I ask group members to assume that only the dreamer knows for sure the meanings of his or her dream. And I um, I take pride in my ability to try on dreams and share my experiences in ways that trigger ahas, you know, and trigger those insights in dreamers. Um, 
but at the same time, I shy away from using the word interpret, partly because I feel strongly that I want the dreamer to retain that final authority, um, that it's their interpretation that's important, and they get that um, with those shifts in perception and perspective. Um, in dream groups, we often use language like, if it were my dream, when we're commenting on someone else's dream. And um, I'm sure that using I language is not new to coaches. It's, um, I think it's sort of a basic helpful way of owning what you're saying, showing uh, ownership that, that what I'm commenting on, or my comment is really more of a re reflection of me than it is of anything outside myself. Um, so especially in dream work, it acknowledges that we're leaving that authority for the dream meaning squarely with the dreamer. We do find that when we're um, sharing dreams in a group that oftentimes someone else's dream will have huge meaning for me. Someone else's dream, you know, I could have dreamed it myself. I get such strong insights from it. Um, but uh, as far as the, the person who dreamt the dream, they get to say for them what it means. So secondly, confidentiality. Um, probably goes without saying. Another important rule, dream workers commit to keeping contents of dream work confidential unless they give permission to share. Um, it provides an in environment for dreamers to really explore the contents of the dreams and the unconscious in a safe way and a supportive way. And that really enhances the ability um, of, of uh, everyone to experience the insights available from the dream. And finally, so, so louder um, again. You're starting to fade. Okay, thank you. Did you want me to say that again? I uh, the last sentence was really faded okay. out. So yeah, that'd be great. Okay, I'm so sorry. You have to keep reminding me. <laughs> um, what I was saying was just that confidentiality really provides an environment for the dreamers to look at the dreams and explore them in a safe way and a supportive way. Um, and that enhances everyone's ability to experience the insights that the dreams offer. And finally, I so we talk about dreamers' choice, and um, we kind of as a game we play dreamers' choice. It's always the dreamers' choice to share or not share uh, the contents of a dream, their thoughts, their history. Uh, any insights that they get, um, that just uh, is, is our final rule. With these, with these rules in place, group dream work helps dreamers to manage and create change by exploring dream messages um, containing new information for balance and wholeness. Most of us need some encouragement to change patterns in our lives and change our beliefs, and dream groups really foster um, a, an encouragement and a compassion that I think is, is rare in um, most groups and most kinds of gatherings. Um, so I want to wrap up a little bit. Um, dreams contain personal guidance. They come to balance us. They're speaking in metaphors and symbols. They lead to insight and clarity about emotions and waking life experience. They strengthen our self-knowledge and lead to healthy decision making. And um, they, when we work on them in groups, are fostering encouragement and compassion. And um, we, I, I believe we all, each of us has a, a very deep well of wisdom, all of that underside of the iceberg that we can reach through our dreams. I'm having a great time sharing this work with people. I'm doing dream groups and working one-on-one. -on -one, and um, I'd be very happy to hear from 
any of you who have questions or of course if you're curious about a dream or would like to work on one um, or if you know of a group that is interested in hearing about dream work and how um, what the benefits and value are I would be very honored to hear from any of you and um, I'm pretty sure we've got plenty of question time um, and I just want to say thank you for taking the time to consider dreams and to be with us this afternoon. And I'm going to put my information up here so you know how to reach me if you need to. And um, I'd like to go ahead and open it up to questions. I, I found that usually um, there are some things that I haven't covered and we can give you some of the information that you're really looking for. By yeah, no, awesome. So for everyone on the call, you have two choices on questions right now. One would be to type in a question, and I will uh, read those questions to Betsy. Your second option is if you raise your hand, just by clicking on the little hand on your control panel, I will unmute you, and that way you can come on live and ask for yourself, uh, just person to person. So Betsy, I do have a couple of questions for you, and I'm sure we'll get more in as we continue. Uh, the first question somebody asked, they said, you know, I have a hard time remembering dreams. Uh, how can I do that? Okay. Um, that is, yeah, that's like the number one question um, because they, they do evaporate so quickly. One thing that, uh, just to begin with, the intention to remember is huge. Um, I think as coaches, you all understand intention pretty well. Um, putting a piece of paper and pen by your bed and saying before you go to sleep, I will remember my dream in the morning um, is huge. And that oftentimes will work within a day or two. Writing a question at the top of that piece of paper um, you may get a dream that's very directly related to the question. You may get something that doesn't seem to be related at all. But um, to have that intention and to have a question in mind, and then immediately when you wake up, remember that paper is there, the pen is there. Make it as easy as possible to do that writing. Some people use a recorder, um, and that works well for some people. Another thing that I really that works very well for me is to try to stay in the same physical position when you're waking up. As soon as you realize that you're starting to wake up, try to stay in that position or get right back to where you were. And as you begin to write, you'll be surprised at how much will come back. Um, and and it's, it's just a process, but I think really the most important thing is that intention. And of course, there are lots of other hints, and, and people uh, suggest certain kinds of tea and um, other things. So there, there are lots of ideas out there, but to have the intention is the most important. OK, good. And I think I have a couple of related questions to that, and then I've got another one coming in, too. So uh, this one is, what if I only remember part of the dream, can I still get the meaning out of it? Right. Um, yeah. There's, I go a little bit on faith with this, um, but I believe that whatever you remember is the most important part. So you write down as much as you can remember, and even if it's just one image or one word, that can really um, pack a lot of information. Um, you take that one word, you take that one image, and you begin to make associations to it, and you'll be surprised at how much you can get out of it. So I am, um, I used to get frustrated, and still do sometimes, oh, I wish I could remember what happened before that. It was so clear when I was sleeping, but it's um, nothing you can do about it, first of all, and second of all, I, I fully believe that whatever you do remember is worth working with and will contain the message. OK, great. And then uh, another question that came in, Dusty, is what do you need to do to prepare yourself before you go to sleep to activate a dream state? 
Um, I think it's important for you for your dreaming space to be comfortable. Um, if you're a person that cares about clutter, or or even if you're not, I think sort of clearing a space and um, you know having your supplies, whatever you need to sleep well um, and be comfortable and be able to write or record your dream when you wake up. I think that those are all important. Being comfortable and um, I, I think that's that's what I would emphasize. Okay. Uh, and then somebody shared a recurring dream of being anxious or late to the airport to catch a flight. And they typed in, how would you interpret this kind of dream for yourself? And, and they did put parentheses around the word interpret, I think, because of how you explained that before. Right. So being anxious or late to the airport to catch a flight. Okay. Um, so the anxiousness, you know, I would just kind of be aware of that. Um, being late, you could take that by itself and think about, is there some way in my life that I'm feeling like I'm late for something? Am I doing something late, like later than other people I know, or later than most people do whatever I do? Um, if I'm late to catch a plane, um, I would want to make the associations to an airplane. Um, for me, an airplane means travel. Uh, it means flying. Um, it means going in a, with others in a public way. So is there a way that I'm trying to take off uh, in a public, either with a group, or in a public way, am I trying to take off that I'm feeling like I'm late for it, or I've missed it, uh, I've missed my opportunity, um, and that you know again, it's, am I feeling anxious about that? For me, in my life, I might have a dream about being late to the airport, um, and it may be reflecting something in my life that is happening late, but I didn't really realize that I was anxious about it, or that I didn't realize that it made me uh, afraid that I might not ever get there. So just being aware of that emotion for me, that I do have some anxiety around this. Um, there's something that I feel like I need to catch up with, or I need to either move a little faster, or I need to see if there's another way to, for me to take off. Um, or what is my plan for taking off? And it sort of puts the spotlight on that part of my life. I hope that's helpful. I, you know, that's, um, I'm, let me see if I could continue a little bit. I mean, if I think, um, if I applied that to dream work, I think there probably was a time for me when I was hoping to get back to dream work and felt like that was my real way of taking off in life and that I was, maybe I was too late, maybe I wasn't ever going to be able to do it. Fortunately, that's not the case. Uh, but yeah, that caused <laughs> a lot of anxiety for me. So. That's great. Um, so many, here's a good question. I've learned that dreams happen in REM sleep, but my dreams seem to be when I'm not in a deep sleep, but rather when I'm partially awake such as early morning hours. Do dreams happen in deep sleep? Is it REM phase? Or does REM occur in deep sleep? Um, I will admit right off the bat to not um, being very articulate about this topic. What I do know is that there is now evidence that we are sleeping, and that we're dreaming throughout the night, and that the cycles throughout the night vary, and we have some different kinds of dreams at different times of the night and at different stages in the sleep cycles. Um, it is really common to, for people to remember dreams from the morning. I mean, it, it just makes sense that those are the most recent. They're the ones that are freshest, and they're 
um, a little bit easier to grab because we're coming out of cycles and getting ready to wake up. Um, so there are good resources, um, lots of good resources about that science of REM sleep and dream cycles. And it's, um, it's just not something that I've focused on enough to be really knowledgeable about at this point. OK, great. No, I mean, to me it sounded like you totally answered that question. So I think that was okay. great. Um, <laughs> I, I got a couple of more here for you. I've got one person who wants to know if you're going to share your rate. Uh, and then I've got, and I'm not sure if you want to talk about that, so I'll just uh, give you the other question as well. Uh, is it hard for people to share dreams? Um, OK. So you said my rates, meaning my, what do I charge? Yes. Yeah, I've got a question on whether or not you'll share that. Sure. Um, right now, I have dream groups, and they meet for two hours at a time, and each person pays $20 for a session. And my hourly, um, actually, it's not an hourly rate. Um, a session for working on a dream is up to an hour and a half, and I charge $60 for that. Um, OK, great. Yeah. And um, I, I'm sure this pertains to when you're working with a group. Is it hard for people to share their dreams? Um, I think that sometimes it is hard for people. Um, I, I've been working with dreams for so long that I, uh, um, it's not hard for me. But I think that there is a perception that when we tell a dream, we're saying more about ourselves than we know, or we're saying things about ourselves that we don't know yet, and that makes us vulnerable. And um, in fact, I think that's true to some extent. What um, the dream groups that I've participated in and led are very, I um, am very careful at the beginning to go through some of the things that we've talked about, or that I talked about today, which is um, that confidentiality piece, but also helping people to realize that we're all doing that. We're all in the same boat. Um, all of us are in the situation, the human situation, of not being able to be aware of everything about ourselves all at once. Um, so Every time you bring something out of the unconscious and learn about it, there are other things that you then aren't focusing on. And so maybe those are going, you know, those are getting less attention. And so every time we meet and share dreams, the dreams are bringing new information. And so we're putting ourselves in that position of being vulnerable but the thing that is so gratifying about this work for me is that we don't have that many cho uh, opportunities in modern life to be vulnerable and to have a place where we can explore these personal, profound issues um, in a place that is safe and welcoming and encouraging, and we're all doing it. Um, that and the fact that I ask people to always remember that it is up to the dreamer to decide what it is that's important about that dream and what the meaning is um, gives everyone, um, uh, I, th I think it makes, it adds to the safety of the, of the group, adds to the safety and the environment of being able to put things out there and try them on and even leave the dream group and go out and try on new behaviors, new attitudes. Um, and to the extent that groups are ongoing, people come back and share that. And the intimacy and the compassion is incredible. I just um, can't say enough about it and what a privilege it is to um, lead these groups and have people come to my home and share their inner lives. It's incredible. Awesome, awesome. 
and Betsy, I do have several people that are typing in that this is helpful and they're saying thank you. I have somebody that said awesome, tell her thank you. Um, another one saying this was so interesting. So lots of feedback on the thank you and that kind of thing. And I'm guessing some people are schedule-wise having to get back. Uh, so I do want to let everyone that is still on the call know that if you have more questions, please do type them in or raise your hand. Uh, Betsy had indicated she was happy to stay on and answer questions. Uh, so whatever else you want to know. And those of you that are heading out and, and back into your day, we appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. And Betsy, I do want to say thank you for doing this webinar for us. I think it was a, a great insight and learning opportunity for people that attended. So thank you very much from myself and, and from the people that are participating as well. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. And thanks for the positive feedback. And um, again, thanks to everyone for coming. And um, uh, dream on. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Good. OK. And I think I have caught everyone's question that typed one in. If I missed your question, please either raise your hand or type it in again, uh, because as they were scrolling through, my, my job was keeping up with that. And I think I caught all of them. Um, any other questions, please just let us know. And good, Kathy, we had talked about if um, I do have one uh, exercise that if there are people who um, have a dream with them or remember one and they have a little extra time, um, I can put up one more slide here and sort of talk you through an exercise and be glad to um, you know give some give some ideas about how to work with the dream. Um, so I'd be glad to share that if there's anyone who stays on. Okay, so let me ask those of you that are still on the call, if you are interested in hanging around and participating in this exercise, do me a favor and raise your hand uh, so uh, I have an idea and I can let Betsy know. Uh, Betsy, I've got several people that do have their hands up. Do you need me to unmute people uh, or do you want to do you want to just walk us through it? Um, I think that would probably be easiest just to walk you through it. And if we need to unmute later, um, that'll become apparent, I guess. Let me do this. Okay. Thing. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So I've got a group of people that are ready for that, so go ahead. Let's see here. Okay. So this is um, this particular exercise I have um, titled as Dreams as Literature. And um, what I suggest people do is to think about the dream and give the dream a title. And then kind of we'll walk through these. Um, various kinds of questions and instructions, and um, then I would love to hear, I guess, maybe you could either type in or if you want to be unmuted and want to, you know, give a verbal comment, um, that, that would be great to hear. So basically, if you have your dream in front of you, Think about the whole dream and just briefly, if you were going to tell a friend about the plot, it was like that you saw a movie, you know, in a, in a sentence or two, how would you describe it in a general way? And you can, you could write that down. Um, it's really helpful to write it down because then when you come back and look at it, you might find uh, some words that are surprising or something like that. So I'm just going to give you a moment to do that. And of course you've, you've got all the instructions so you're welcome to move ahead. Um, but next you want to take, if there are char other, other characters in the dream, describe each character's personality using just a few words pretty quickly. Um, we, don't want to, we don't want to impose too much thinking on it. We want it sort of to flow right up from the, from the subconscious. Who are those people? What are they like?
And then when you're ready to, to start thinking through from beginning to end, what, where were the strong emotions, any emotions? What, how did I feel at the beginning after various things happened? And just along the edge, was I feeling, again, those four basic emotions. It's good to get to those eventually, happy, sad, angry, afraid. And just to have an idea of what's the strong energy in the dream. And then I want to think about the waking context of the dream. So, and this is something that you can, um, you know, any one of us could write a term paper on what's going on in our lives right now. So that's probably something that's better to come back to a little bit later um, unless it really pops up for you. Um, oh, that this is, seems to be related to some situation in career or relationships or whatever. Um, the last two questions are really good ones. What is the good news of the dream? If, uh, if your friend wanted to know, hey, what is the good news of the dream? What does that dream say that's good news? And then finally, you want to look at the other side too and see, does the news have some bad news or some news that um, takes us back a little bit and makes us wonder if something needs adjustment? I'm just going to give you another moment to think about those. And so if there, um, you know, this may or may not have been helpful, but um, if there's some feedback that it was helpful or if there's someone who would be interested in sharing a dream or sharing some elements of a dream, um, be glad to, to hear that. And I don't know how many people are on, but um, this um, uh, We've still period. got eight people that hung around for this part of the conversation. So if somebody wants me to unmute you so that you can share yours verbally, please raise your hand and I will unmute you. Uh, and then if anyone has comments, uh, feedback, please type it in. Uh, so I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Uh, probably the first, the first comment I got applies to several people. Betsy, they said, definitely will not share this one, but mine was helpful and I felt precaution as a sign. So that was that was great feedback. Uh, uh -huh. Just on that one, I'm, I'm guessing some people might be hesitant. So, uh, if somebody would want to share, please raise your hand and then give us other feedback or comments. Uh, typing them in. So yeah, I, I I sure understand. You know, this is. I, we have no idea who's on the call, <laughs> so um, right. I, I can understand why people wouldn't want to share. What I was considering was um, I was working with a friend on a dream this morning, and I could um, I could share a little bit if that was helpful. Um, it sounds like people maybe sort of already got the um, the gist of how that works. I had a dream recently that I. Um, I was sleeping and I looked out the window and I saw my dad backing a huge car, a big yellow car, out of the driveway. And my dad's not living anymore and it, was, it made me really anxious. And um, so the plot would be something like um, dad's, uh, dad's 
driving a man, old old man with dementia, I should add. Um, old man is uh, going out into the night without permission, something like that. Um, his personality, um, well, he, he had dementia, and um, but he's a very kind person, and um, I mean, he's a father, so. Um, my emotions were very anxious. Um, what's going on in my life right now? Um, I don't know. This dream is making me wonder whether um, this father part of myself is um, somehow backing up or backing out, um, that I'm letting go of that kind of father uh, image and maybe um, um, using a new kind of father image. Um, and the good news of the dream, he's in a big car, he's probably not going to get hurt, he looks like he knows where he's going. The bad news is it's the middle of the night and he's out there wandering around. So anyway, that's um, sort of how I begin to work with that. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's a great example. So yeah. I'm, I'm just walking through it, and, and thank you for sharing that. And I'm, I'm getting that feedback as well. I've got somebody saying that you're going to hear from them. <laughs> so okay. it sounds like they want to they wanna have further conversation about, about it. So that's great. And, uh, it, and I'm just going to throw that out to the group. What other questions or comments do you have? And uh, Betsy, I'm, I'm going to say I think we're at that phase in the webinar where everybody's waiting to hear what someone else's question is. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know that happens. We're all curious. You know, gosh, I don't have a great question to ask. I just really want to keep listening and, and learning. So uh, I, I think we're at that stage right now. So uh, very, very good stuff. Uh, maybe you want to throw the slide back up of your contact information for anybody that wants that. And that way, uh, those of you that are on the call, if you do want to get a hold of Betsy, you've got her information. And of course, hopefully all of you have mine. Do let me know how we can be helpful. So we appreciate your time. We appreciate your participation. And uh, thank you again, Betsy. I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording, and that way if a few people want to hang around a little bit longer, uh, we'll at least be off the recording. So okay. uh, thank you, everyone. That's